Hey, what's going on everyone? Technically Wild here and welcome to the Dead of the Night full map guide. In this video, you will get all steps on completing the Easter egg as well as everything you need to do to get all 10 trophies on Dead of the Night. As always, in the description there is going to be timestamps, so if you want to skip to a certain Easter egg step or a certain trophy, you can do so very easily to make this process a lot faster for you. As well as when I'm doing part locations in the top left corner of the screen, there will be what part we are finding and the location it is found at, as well as I will be talking about it, so you will have visual and audio references on how to build everything within the map. I did forget to mention in the description if there is a trophy beside a timestamp that means it is for a trophy and if there is an egg beside a timestamp it is for an easter egg step. Now with all that clarified, let's get right into it. Okay, so first things first, let's get a couple buildables out of the way. We will be needing these for future trophies and easter egg steps, so I'm just gonna fly through all the locations. For the ballistic shield, the first part is the left of the SOG wall by on the east balcony, the grand staircase leaning on the pillar, and the west balcony leaning against the glass windows. The second part can spawn in the top of the study, on a table, on a couch in the library, and on a broken shelf in the library as well. Part 3 can spawn in a chair in the east hallway, in the dining room right of the swordfish wall by on the floor, and the last one is in the dining room as well and it is the shelf left of the staircase. Next is going to be the silver bullets and the first one is going to be the candle holder part and the first one's as follows, the entrance hall on the round dining table, on the floor near the fireplace in the billiards room, in the main hall near the mozu wall by near the clock and that is all three locations for that. Now for the trophy part for the silver bullets, one can spawn in the dining room on the red table opposite of the clock, on the ground near the sofa in the west hallway and on the huge dining table in the dining room. The last part is going to be the plate which spawns in the cellar. One can be on the wall near the vases, one can be opposite of the workbench on the shelf, and the last is going to be on the large wooden table beside the noose. Now once you've melted the steel parts for the silver bullets, now what you can do is find the last three parts to get gunpowder, and the first one is guano which spawns in the right side of the mausoleum behind a tree, the cemetery near the bottom left staircase leading up to the mausoleum, and the path near mausoleum staircase right corner after taking a left. Next is going to be the charcoal and it will spawn in a fireplace in the billiards room, master bedroom, or main hall. The last is going to be the sulfur, and it can spawn the left of the greenhouse laboratory entrance on a shelf, the right of a greenhouse laboratory entrance on a shelf, and the upper left of the greenhouse laboratory on a table. Now once you have all six parts and the silver is melted, what you now do is go to the library and create silver bullets. The first gun you put silver bullets on will be free, but after that it will cost 3000 to 5000 points depending if your gun is pack-a-punched or not. The first trophy is quick thinking, in Dead of the Night Unlock the forest by round 7. This is really easy to do because it's just unlocking Pack-a-Punch by round 7. First, what you have to do is activate the Sentinel Artifact and then locate 3 vases around the map with colored smoke coming out of it. The first is the purple crystal which is in the master bedroom, bedroom hallway, or trophy room. The blue crystal can spawn in the study and below the balcony in the library there are 2 locations as well. There is only two locations for the green crystal which is both in the wine cellar. Once you find the crystal, either shoot or knife the vase and the crystal will be revealed. Next, you have to kill zombies near each crystal and then interact when the stone is fully charged. Once you interact, you will see an item somewhere around the map. Each item has a task assigned to it. There are two defense steps and one escort step. The first defense step can be the grandfather clock which there are three locations. In the billiards room, dining room or main hall. What you do if you get a clock, you will go to the clock, hold square on it, and you will see a little time dial spawn on the floor. What you have to do is basically stand in it or around it for 60 seconds, which leads into our next trophy, which is on the clock. Stay within the clock until time runs out. This is really easy to do with the strife, wraith fires, and everything like that. Once you complete the 60 seconds, a tuning fork will spawn in the clock completion. Next you can get a escort mission which will be escorting a ghost to a certain area which will reveal a tuning fork. The first thing you might see when you interact with the crystal is a burned doll which will spawn on the entrance hall, just hold square, a ghost will spawn. The female figure which is a scratched painting in the music room. Next can be a young girl with an older man in the smoking room. A creepy girl painting in the east gallery. and a rope in the wine cellar, as well as Alistair's will and testament in the study. 
Once again, once you hold square on this item, a ghost will spawn. Just follow it around, maybe save a zombie or so, and just escort it to where it ends off. Once it ends, you will pick up your second tuning fork, and the last can be any random perk machine. Once you go to any random perk machine and you get close to it, your vision will go all weird and a bunch of vampires will spawn. Just kill all the vampires, you don't have to kill zombies during this if you want to save zombies and do it on lower rounds. Just kill the vampires and you will drop your third tuning fork and then once you have your third tuning fork go to the forest and then you can open up pack a punch if you do this by round seven once again you will get the trophy quick thinking now we are going to unlock the alistair's fully for free you can get him from the box but for those who want to do a quick little mini easter egg to get him for free all you have to do is find four symbols around the map now the first is a blue symbol which can spawn in the cemetery on a gravestone behind a tree and the pillar right of the staircase to the mausoleum. In the mausoleum there is on the top of a crypt on the right side a symbol can spawn and on the base of the lion grave on the left side. Now for the green symbol it can spawn on the greenhouse terrace outside of the gate left and the gardens inside a gazebo on the left of the doorway outside of the gate right to the perk machine and the left bench outside of the gate left of the perk machine. Now the yellow symbol can spawn in the forest terrace in one of the four locations, the wall left of the bowie knife behind a shrub, outside the left gate on the left, outside the right gate in the middle, and the right of the window right of the GKS wall by. Now the red symbol can spawn in the master bedroom right of the fireplace on the wall, east gallery above a table between two chairs, in the wine cellar bottom of wooden barrel outside of the zombies barrier, and the above the painting behind the bar in the dining room. Once you have all four symbols, proceed to the library, rotate the code until it matches all four symbols which you have found, and once successfully inputted, Alistair's fully can be attained. Now, to upgrade it to the Chaos Theory, what you have to do is kill a werewolf with silver bullets and it will drop Chaos material. Then, once you have your shield built, proceed to the library and knife the bookshelf with the ballistic shield to reveal a hidden room. Obtain the blue part from the podium and then navigate to the greenhouse. First, put your Werewolf Chaos material into the large machine to craft Prima Materia. Then, what you do once you have your Prima Materia is go to the building table and craft the Chaos Theory. Now, to upgrade the Chaos Theory to Alistair's Annihilator, what you have to do is go to the mausoleum on the two staircases that connect, and there will be a bunch of lamps lit up. There will be four lamps lit up with yellow and one lamp lit up with a darker orange. What you have to do is shoot the orange lamp until it goes away. It should take one shot from the chaos theory. Once it goes away and disappears, there will be another lamp that will light up. Just shoot that lamp and then complete the sequence. Once you've completed the sequence, a bat will spawn. Shoot the bat with the chaos theory and it will drop the bat material. Then what you can do is kill vampires with the tornado charge shot from the chaos theory and they should drop bat bile. After collecting four, go to the cemetery and interact with the glowing coffin. A crimson Nosferatu will spawn along with 15 vampires so be ready. Now while the crimson Nosferatu is out, what you can do is get it to bite you to achieve the achievement Megabite. In dead of the night, get bit by a crimson Nosferatu. Now once it bites you, you will be invisible from zombies for about 3 seconds because it will drop you to 1 health or 50 health depending on how much health you had prior. Now once you kill it, you can pick up the vampire materia and all you need now to get the Alistair's Annihilator is go to the forest and there is going to be 3 mounds of dirt with blue mushrooms on top. Shoot zombies or vampires directly with the charged green chaos shot and it will dig up the mound. One of these mounds will reveal an upgrade part, retrieve the part after it has been dug up and then you can proceed to the greenhouse. Once you're at the greenhouse you will need to create Prima Materia two more times which will also end up giving you the achievement Alchemical Opus. In Dead of the Night create Prima Materia three times. Once you have crafted the Bat and Vampire Materia into Prima Materia, what you can now do is craft the Alistair's Annihilator, just head over to the crafting bench and you can craft it. Once you're still in the greenhouse, what you can do is get a werewolf in there and kill it with the lightning trap. This will give you the trophy shockingly good time. In Dead of the Night, electrocute a werewolf. I do recommend, however, weakening the werewolf because the trap won't kill it right off the bat. I like to shoot two or three shots of the Alistair's Annihilator to him and then just turn on the lightning trap and finish him off. What you can also do is another trophy called Board Gamer. 
in the dead of the night, kill a werewolf in the library with a revolver. Now the Alistair's Annihilator, Chaos Theory, and Alistair's Fully all count as revolvers, so you can kill a wolf at any time in the game in the library to achieve this trophy. The next trophy is going to be Shrinking Feeling. In dead of the night, shrink 15 zombies with a single shot from Alistair's Annihilator. When you use charged shots with Alistair's Annihilator, there will be four elements. One of the elements will shoot a bright green neon circle. Zombies running into it will shrink and disappear, kind of like the baby gun from Shangri-La, but a little different. What I like to do is camp at the Sentinel Artifact and just sit there and just shoot charged shots on high rounds. Really easy to do. The next trophy is going to be Master Your Craft and Dead of the Night, use every crafting table. We have used all the crafting tables but the one in the cemetery and that is to craft the steak knife. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the forest and there's going to be a tree with an alchemy symbol and a lantern. If you back up you will see there are three trees in the background as well with symbols. You're going to want to take note of all four symbols going from left to right and that is going to be your order. You can only do this once a game so don't mess up because you will have to restart your whole game. Once you have all four symbols written down, then proceed to the gardens. There's going to be four slabs with all the symbols. You're gonna to wanna to shoot the slabs from left to right in order in the forest. So one can be on the opposite of the perk machine, the ledge outside of the gazebo, behind the vase to the left of the vapor, and the crevice between the perk machine and the metal gate. Just shoot these in order from left to right as repeated, and then head back to the forest. Buy the bowie knife and then knife three symbols. What I like to do is I like to knife them in order just in case and then you will notice a branch falls. Once this branch falls, then proceed to the mausoleum and all you have to do now is get Nosferatu souls. Crimson Nosferatus do count, but if you're doing this on a low round for the Easter egg, you will not get them at this time. So just get some vampire kills and then once done, go to the crafting table and craft it. Now that you have the steak knife, this leads into the next trophy, which is well done. In Dead of the Night, steak a Nosferatu in the dining room. It doesn't have to be a Crimson Nosferatu once again. All you have to do is just knife one. It is a one-shot knife up to round 30 on the vampires and 25 on all other zombies. So it's really easy to do. And then that leaves us with only one trophy left. To get that last trophy, we have to complete the Easter egg. So to start off with the telescope quest line, first everyone in the game has to have silver bullets on a bullet weapon and proceed to the mausoleum. First they need to shoot the antenna simultaneously at the same time until it retracts. Then another antenna will come out of the mausoleum and shoot a beam towards the mansion. Next you're going to want to make your way to the north atrium bridge by spawn and there will be a panel with three wheels. Now what you have to do is hold square to reveal the wheels and then block all three beams of light for the rings of atlas. First you want to turn the middle wheel until the light is in place and then turn the left wheel until blue is in place and then turn the right wheel until red is in place and you're going to want to repeat this until the puzzle is solved. After the puzzle is solved you will get a cue and atlas will blow up. Then what you have to do is search for the zodiac symbols around the map. There are seven possible locations I believe and each possible zodiac symbol location will have a possible of three spawn locations for scratch marks. Sometimes you will only have two, sometimes you only have one, sometimes you will have three. The amount of scratches correlates to the number or the amount of zodiac symbol points. I like to call them points, I don't even know. It's basically the numerical amount of that zodiac symbol. So if you have 13 scratch marks in three locations combined, that means that zodiac symbol has a total numerical value of 13. What you want to do is you're going to want to keep track of which zodiac symbol goes from the lowest to highest number. So now let's go all seven locations. First, you can have the billiards room, entrance hall, trophy room, main hall, library, wine cellar, and dining room. Feel free to pause the video because I'm just going through this really fast right now because this is the longest step of the Easter egg. So, once you have all three zodiac symbols with their numerical value, proceed to the greenhouse. In the greenhouse, there is a telescope on the second floor with a dial with a bunch of zodiac symbols. Make sure that you got all the scratch marks because if you mess this up, you will have to restart. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go put each symbol in from lowest to highest value and knife it and hold square until it disappears. Once you go from lowest to highest, you will get the next cue. What you're then gonna wanna have is a shield on you, and then everyone in game is gonna wanna go to the lightning trap. 
With your shield out, run through the lightning trap and then run upstairs to knife the telescope. If done correctly, the telescope will raise up and then all you have to do is with your shield, head over to this wheel and knife it. Then all you have to do is go downstairs and hold square on this little tablet that will be revealed after this step is done correctly and it will just be a little defense step and then once the werewolf spawn and you kill the werewolves, the step will be over and you can then pick up the stone. Now we are going to do the effigy quest line. Once the Alistair's Annihilator is built, in the graveyard certain birch trees will have leaves falling down. Each tree has one branch that can be shot down. Once you interact with the fallen branch, it is collected. Repeat this until you've collected 5 branches. In the graveyard, there is going to be a gravestone that reads 1912 as the death date. One specific player per game can interact with it in enter spirit mode. Have the player shoot the ground in front of the effigy with Alistair's Annihilator until a fireball charge shot is lit and hold square at the same time to build the effigy. Once that person in spirit mode climbs on it, it will start on fire. That player will be pulled onto the effigy and it will fall through a red corridor. You will now enter afterlife mode and you will be invisible to all other players but not enemies so zombies and everything else in the map can still attack you. In afterlife mode, in the mansion you will have to start searching for a female ghost. She often hides in perk machines and just outside barriers so be sure to scale the edges of every room and then once the ghost spawns, escort the ghost back towards the effigy in the graveyard until she produces a large column of flame and then a stone slab will spawn on the ground. Have all players interact with the stone slab and then once again you will have the exact same defense step you had for the telescope. Once completed you will have the second slab. The last quest is going to be the night quest. First, you are going to require a fire gate trap. I would recommend building the fire gate in the library because it is the easiest to complete this. If you do have two fire gate traps, the next trap you're going to want to use is the master bedroom. Now, once you have the fire gate traps in place and you have the Alice's Annihilator, turn on the trap and then with a charge shot from the Annihilator, shoot the fire. The fire will then turn blue. When the fire is blue, take out your shield. Your shield will light on fire and then you will have to knife four fireplaces in order. The order will be the same every single time. The first order is smoking room, library on the right of the trap, library on the left of the trap, and then the billiards room. Once done correctly, a gem will spawn in the fire. All you have to do is pick it up and then you have to repeat this two more times. The second set is main hall on the left side, east gallery, main hall on the right side, and then west gallery. Once again, a crystal will spawn. The final one is trophy room, master bedroom, music room, and dining room. Once you have all three crystals picked up from the fire, there are three knights around the map that you have to hold square on to make floating crystals spawn. I go in this specific order because you can gather up all three crystals very fast and very efficiently. I start off on the main hall, hold square until the crystal spawns, then I take the crystal to the greenhouse terrace, and then finally in the graveyard. Now, when escorting the crystals, you're going to have to walk decently slow, so I recommend saving one or two zombies at the end of a round. The reason being is if you go too fast, the crystals will not follow you. Once you have all three crystals, proceed to the forest at Pack-a-Punch. There's going to be three circles, just take each colored crystal to that corresponding circle. Now what you have to do is get souls for all three knights. There is going to be two times you have to get souls until they are all by Pack-a-Punch. Once you're at Pack-a-Punch, all you have to do is get a wolf in the middle of the triangle and kill it. Once you kill the wolf, a third and final slab will spawn on the floor. Same thing, do your defense step and you are ready to go to the boss fight. Now to access the boss fight in the forest, there is going to be a wall where you can put all three stone slabs, have everyone in the game interact with it, and you will teleport to the boss fight. This is a really easy boss fight and all you have to do is each statue in a corner will have a green light coming out of it just line it up to the green box and then once the wolf is in the green box just shoot it until it is damaged once the wolf is damaged and disappears for the first time the second time the wolf spawns you will have a green box somewhere but you will not see where it is you have to repeat the exact same thing that you did in step one of the easter egg until the box is lit up green usually all you have to do is get one statue and guess and check until you can see where the square is and then once you can see where the square is you basically know where it is just line up the other statues and then once again once the wolf is invisible and then runs into the square and becomes visible just shoot it until it dies and that is literally all you have to do for the easter egg boss fight which will get you the last trophy trial by ordeal and dead of the night defeat the evil within 
Well, guys, that's it. That's all 10 trophies as well as all buildables except for the Shadow Claws because I didn't want to do that, honestly, not going to lie. But anyway, that's the Easter egg. That's all the achievements. That's all the buildables except one. I hope you guys did enjoy. As always, I will see you in the next one. Peace.